I've been making videos on games for a long while. Mostly it was self mutilating torture, aka Planet Side 2, but almost after two years of consistent grinding, I mean, playing Elite Dangerous, Yamex is finally capable of forming some sort of opinion about four year old game. Yay, now I can take home the participation award like a special little snowflake! Ah, better late than never, I guess. Hey, just like with abortions, right? So I guess we start out with the good old days in Kickstarter where Frontier had the unfortunate pleasure of announcing the project right after Star Citizen's Kickstarter. Basically, Star Citizen drained all the bigger whales aching for their ultimate space shooty fly fly game, and what Elite got was basically leftovers, but despite my horrible painting of events, this, as the Captain Hindsight might help us to determine, actually benefits, well, maybe not developers of Elite, but at least to me, to showcase that Star Citizen today is a glorified deck demo, while Elite Elite, at the very least, is a real game? Ah, well, okay, I'm being very snarky today. Elite, in fact, is more than that. So, just listen in. Here comes the old man Yamix story. So, back before dinosaurs were a thing, this young little whippersnapper roamed the dirty lands of free to play gaming, while on occasion trading some hats with those weirdos in the fortress. In essence, I was spunking about making some, well, garbage videos, but one day after unknowingly stumbling across a simple Ellie Dangerous video, something in me snapped. Oh, you can't! I hope it's not my hip again! As I looked up videos of people interacting with ships, I was fascinated to see a game where you could poke and prod your space fart machine in a greater detail than women get inspected in German medical porn. Yeah, that is good! Anyway, something in that process tickled my pickle and plums, so for a wee lad who spent most of his days pirate, I mean, looking at games from afar, I decided to buy my first ever game, Team Fortress 2. And right after a few months, Elite Dangerous, a self-proclaimed first-person shooter psychopath decides to don the game equivalent of a fursuit and delve, as first, into a thing that is commonly known as a dad game. Technically, Elite belongs to the space simulator genre, but saying that Elite is a simulator is, well... Um, Elite, just like many other real games, tend to take liberties with some mechanics in favor of gameplay. And when I say take liberties, Elite might as well be a horny short fat man with a comb over, in a strip bar being liberal with his hands on simulator stripper bodies, if you know what I mean. Much like in Star Wars, Elite has this notion that vacuum is an element on periodical table, so presumably developers had some of that American education. So, there is sound in space. Mind you, this is something I do not complain about. For me, the biggest nitpick in the simulator department has always been the speed reduction, when no thrusters are being used or when you're going straight line. Now oh, fine, developers have mentioned why they chose to do this, even to me personally, but still. Yamix wants some space realism in his space magical girl adventure. Though unlike most of the immersion seeking junkies with their privileged goggles and hot asses, yours truly loves his mouse and keyboard and as a surprise to me, default controls were super easy to get used to. Not sure if this is just me, but I love that about the game. Not as much as I love the intricate detail in which you can grab and stroke your ship, but still. There are things that are unmapped, so if you wanted your experience to be totally painless, well, little slave boy, developers have kindly invited you to do their job and read up on what controls you'll still need to map and remap. Have fun! There goes your first two hours at least, so no Steam refund for you. Okay, I kid, I kid. If it makes you feel any better, at least you have the option to remap everything, unlike with No Man's Sky. Or, it's not as a big of a cost of fuck of abortion that Star Citizen dares to call its default controls. So let's talk about the jizzing aspect of the game that I mentioned before. The immersion! Surprisingly indeed, Elite has its fist up your ass deep enough to feel the pulse and heart rate to determine what passes for exciting and interesting environments and music for the tone it goes for. Unfortunately, after you get used to the whole wandering curiosity vastness vibe, the game or its developers seem to have forgotten that there is more than just ominous things in the world. So if you came in expecting some comedy and tragedy, well better luck next time, cause Elite knows only one tone and by golly it will play it like it's going out of style. Also, as Dead Space has proven, breaking up gameplay with different menus and windows just destroys the immersion. So I'm sad to say the galaxy map in Elite Dangerous is a whole new window 
while everything else in the game is done through the ship's side panels. But speaking of galaxy map, yes it's true that you have more than one star system to visit. In fact, there are so many star systems to visit, you'll go blind from all the loading screen hyperspace jumps just to get to the center of the galaxy. And no, before you ask, Elite is not like No Man's Sky where you get the trolliest ending ever once you reach that place. Still, there are so many star systems in Elite to visit, you might forget to ask, but what can you do in them? Are they all different? Answer pretty much the same thing you do everywhere else. And no, not really. The term mile wide, inch deep would be applicable here. In short, yes, this is a massive sandbox, but most of the interesting things and gameplay resides in a rather small part of it. Everything else is padding, just like salad in American Burger. Utterly useless. And here comes the angry explorer crowd telling me that our Jesus generated planet Y-237 go fuck yourself with unique surface. Okay, sure, there are things like that, but I don't want to spend literal days shipping my ass there to see the damn thing. I better go on YouTube to do that. And speaking of YouTube, this will also be the place where you learn about the story and any sort of narrative or lore about the game because 95% of the lore, you know, the stuff that happened in the past for the game and its background is not put in the game itself. In fact, the reason why you spawn in the Sidewinder at the start of the game is written in the fucking game's map. Manual, not the game itself. What? Developers claim that the game has this evolving narrative, and sure, have that if you must, but how can a random wanker new to the whole franchise learn what the fucking anime girl is about? This to me is the greatest shortcoming of the game. Unlike in most other sandbox games, there really is no story-based missions, just a lot of what can be generously described as RNGs' discarded rank tissues. But the worst thing about this Roll D20 adventure simulator for me came after I eventually smashed my face against a grind wall. To a certain degree, the game feels rewarding as you go about doing the things you like or that are in your capacitive capability. But for me, when I picked up Vulture, the grave reality punched out all my teeth with a great big swing. Mind you, I came from free-to-play games where grind is like a second nature, but Elite actually broke me with the need to repeat the same tasks with absolutely no variation. Perhaps I would be inclined to forgive the mission's simplistic design if I hadn't been forced to repeat them so much. But here I am grinding my crush for credits, feeling like a cheap hooker. Sure, you don't need the biggest ships to see or do almost all the things that the game has to offer, but come on, we all have the need, the need to present our e-penis! And so I stopped playing the game regularly once I hit that wall. And mind you, that was somewhere close to 50 to 100 hours. But on the bright side, all the experiences I talked today were coming from back in the day when the game was just new, in 2014 or so. Still, even today, there are still quite a lot of these issues persisting, especially the story one. Yet make no mistake, Elite still has one of the more immersive experiences I've ever had with the game, and the fidelity level as well as the scale does leave you satisfied for a long time. There are plenty of things to see and do indeed, and only when you get used to the things, you start to notice all the cracks and shortcuts being taken in building this massive brothel of excellence. You know, it's interesting that I, as I mentioned, came in a hardcore FPS fan and got quite an unforgettable time playing the game. To me, it stands as a sign of quality. And you know, back when Elite released, it rose to the top spot of the space sim genre. What is weird is the fact that it's still, even to this day, the best one out there. So take it as you will. And to be frank, it's kinda sad that there's no competitor even now, after four years for Elite Dangerous. And sure, yeah, there are some things coming, there's always something coming in Orgy as well. But how about we focus on things that have actually come? Ah, uh, yes, indeed, I'm constipated! The new chair technology by Remlock. Or was it Remlock? I don't know who'd made them, but, anyways, fantastic chairs that will basically break you.